editors and many of the contributors to our book that was published a year ago, this April, 2012, The 21st Century Black Librarian in America, Issues and Challenges. We are happy to have you with us this afternoon and happy to have so many of the contributors here, many who come from out of state, my co-editor, we're really happy to see, we usually see each other in library conferences, is here from uh, New Mexico. So, wow. you know, it was, she, she wanted to come to New York anyway, this is just a good enough reason to come. <laughs> and we have several of the contributors here, or at least nine that I've counted so far. Um, many of them here in the city, so we're outside the city. And we're glad to have them join us as well. And we're glad to have you, our audience, here. Uh, here comes another contributor. Margaret, please come up front. <laughs> After you get mom settled. This was a, uh, the fr in, the, in its first initial stages, uh, a challenge that was presented to us in a setting un not unlike this one. We were speaking at a library conference and I was challenging the young librarians that they had a responsibility to follow our mentor, Dr. E.J. Josie the founder of the Black Caucus of the American Library Association, and an activist librarian, educator, mentor, uh, journalist, author, in that he, he wrote the first book, The Black Librarian in America, in 1970, and then repeated The Black Librarian in America, revisited in 1994. And it was my challenge that when he had finished other works like What Black Librarians Are Saying, that it has now been some 16 years, at that point, 16 years, since Dr. Josie had written his work. Uh, Dr. Josie had just passed uh, earlier that year. And my challenge to the young newbies, as I called it, was that you have a responsibility to stand on Dr. Josie's shoulders and all of the other uh, librarian ancestors and elders who had written and documented the issues that black librarians had faced in a profession that was somewhere around 5% represented African American librarians, male and female, uh, and that our issues, uh, whether it's the issues that Sister Thomas faces representing Brooklyn Public Library as an African American woman and Board of Trustees, or whether it's mm -hmm. at the reference desk or in academia or public libraries, school libraries, too often we're just ignored, overlooked. Uh, we may be at the table, but they just act like we're not there. We're invisible in many cases. And as many co accomplishments and contributions that we've made to the profession, there's still challenges that we, we, feel, we find today and that they needed to be documented as well. And that my challenge to the new librarians was that they should step up and fulfill the responsibility of telling their story and stories because we wanted to make sure they represented across the library profession. And before I finished my sentence, somebody from the audience said, well, you're, you're like our modern day E.J. Josie, you should do it. And Akila and Je Julius Jefferson who works with the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., both chimed out, yeah, we'll help you, we'll help you. So the challenge was thrown back on me, and that's not one of the best things for somebody to do is to challenge me about something, because then i got to prove I can do it. So the end result is the 21st Century Black Librarian in America Issues and Challenges, published last year by Scarecrow Press. I wrote a letter to Scarecrow Press documenting the works that Dr. Josie had done and the legacy had left us and the, the challenge that we would like to issue a new work and they thought it was a great idea. Uh, we started back and forth negotiations with the publishing company and started a, a path that led us for a little over a year, which we're finding out was not a long time in terms of getting a book published. But it was a very good year for us because one, we found out that there were many people who felt that they had something to say that they wanted to contribute to the book, and that they, too, wanted to stand on Dr. Josie's shoulders. Uh, we looked at the format that Dr. Josie had taken with his books and followed the format that he had followed, uh, and then added to it because things had changed with technology and other things in, in terms of record, record, 
recognition of the profession. But we started to put the book together. We put a call out in late December 2000. Like, this is 13, so I gotta remember back now. I guess it's 2011. And uh, by early spring, we had over 60 responses. Uh, we selected out of that 60, which we thought was a great number, a lot of well-written work. We selected, we wanted to keep it within the framework of what the page numbers that they had given us for the book. We carved it down to about okay, 40. Okay, the title of it is, What Does Black Librarianship Look Like in a Proverbial Information Age? Hmm. And really for us, the information age is a digital divide. The more you look at what's happening in public schools, what's happening in, um, with people having to receive their documents, just here in New York City, working in a public library, we spend more time helping people nav navigate the governmental websites than we do it, introduce them to a book. Mm -hmm. They will walk through the doors now, my worker told me I need to go down to the public library to print out my child care benefit history so I can recertify for public housing. And this is real. And a lot of traditional librarians um, take offense to that. They don't want to help. But what is information? What is service to the community? It's all about the community. And if this is what the community needs are, how do we meet those needs? So in our book, it's the second paragraph on page 53. We wrote, today's public libraries are changing as a result of the era of new technology and knowledge combined with the legislation enacted in 2002, resulting in public library as a community information center. In addition, tough economic times today have been proven pivotal. As evident in the days of Vivian Harsh's work, the role of the black librarian has always encompassed the traditional roles of all librarians, collection development, acquisitions, cataloging, classification, circulation, reference work, preservation, conservation. However, throughout history, black librarians have maintained close cultural ties to their community, protecting historical cultural information from the loss and damage, and hence we have added the newly coined term, cultural keeper, to the responsibilities of black librarianships. So we are cultural keepers, and we have to keep our culture together. We have to enlighten, and then when people come into our branches that from the community, and they want the information that they need, we have to keep that and keep giving out the information. Because if we stop giving out the information, where else will our people go, our customers' constituency base go? They have no place else to go but the public library. And I don't know about anybody else, but I kicked the habit in New York City at Town Warner. I couldn't afford to give him $200 a month and keep making the billionaires rich. Mm -hmm. So I only have internet, I don't have cable. And that's because the rates are really, really high. And most families today can't afford internet. Mm -hmm. You know, the average price for internet is like $50 a month. So how, where else would they come for their access? The public library. So let's keep doing what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you.